Good afternoon. Welcome to my daily broadcast. Here we go. Make sure we're live. Can we do that any more? Yeah, just about. All right. Attempting to get a bit good, good framing on the picture. Sorry, it's the photographer of me trying to get it straight. I don't need to apologize. I'm just doing what it is. So, um, first of all, let me choose myself in case you haven't seen my broadcast before. My name is Barry Selby. I am a best selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert helping strong, successful women find balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion for the Divine Feminine. And I do these talks every day called Messages from the Masculine to Inspire the Feminine Heart. And today's is the penultimate for the year, which is number 364. Yeah, tomorrow's going to be one year anniversary, which is crazy making in a way. It's insane. And today's topic actually was inspired as I had a, as they, my talks are usually inspired, by the way. Um, and we'll see what comes through because it's sometimes the channeled. But today's one is actually inspired from um, an opportunity I had today to go visit a place called Peace Over, Vi Peace Over Violence with a friend of mine, Deborah Kagan, and another friend, uh, Smoyer, Smoyer, Smoyerov. I'll get your name messed up. Sorry, love. Messed up your last name. Anyway, we went there to present a check that Deborah had um, earned, accumulated from donations to one of her events, which was Vagina Monologues Santa Monica, 20th anniversary to support Peace Over Violence, which is an amazing organization that does work with mostly women, but men too, who've been through abuse, um, violence in relationship and family dynamics in home life, domestic abuse, and help them basically get over that, which is amazing. They, they have suicide hotlines, suicide hotlines, abuse hotlines. They've had, the, they're one of the oldest organizations around based downtown. And so it really got me it hit me hard in a way. I mean, I, I love being there. It was a lot of fun, great, joyful connection, talking, and the donation was wonderful for them to receive as a presentation. But the reality was, why they have to be in business in the first place is so necessary, but also what's so wrong with our culture, which is that abuse and violence in relationship is still happening, to put it simply. So... I want to speak to you if you've been through that or if you're in the middle of that. So, hi, Diana. Nice to have you here. Thanks for joining me. Um, and by the way, quick quick aside, this will be on YouTube as well as on Facebook Live. So I will be saying hi to people on Facebook Live, which you won't see if you're watching this on YouTube. So having been at this event earlier today and meeting the wonderful women who run this organization that is called Peace Over Violence, downtown L.A., you can go to peaceoverviolence.org, I believe. I'm, I'll look it up and put it underneath in the comments. If you're going through something where there is domestic violence, abuse, hurt, wounding on any level, I'll make this very clear. That is not the love you deserve. That is not what you're... That is not why... No, wrong word. That is not something you need to put up with. Now... I need to do a quick aside because for some of you out there, you think it's normal because you were raised with this. And this is part of the work I've talked about this before, but I want, I want to put it in this instance in particular because for some of you might go, oh crap, as you realize what's going on. So if you're someone who is in abusive relationship after abusive relationship after abusive relationship, I would pretty much guarantee, not that I say I want to guarantee anything like this, but you may experience looking back at your own life when you were a child that you were raised in an abusive environment. Either abuse directed at you or between your parents or between you, your parents and siblings. You were involved in an abusive environment. And so as an adult, you will tend to attract that into your relationship life because that is the lens you look through seeing how love works. And this is why it's going to be del not delicate but, but clear about this because some people are looking at, of course, why would it be in an abusive relationship? It's not loving. It isn't loving. Well, this is the thing. For many people who are in abusive relationships, it is loving because that's the way they've been wired because they were trained that way as kids. And I'm not going to be able to do a whole coaching, counseling thing in this environment, but I want to give you the bullet points so you get this. And if you want to get deeper help, let me know. Reach out to me. But I'll certainly put the link in for this organization's website underneath. So if you're actually in the situation where you need to get out physically, and you need to get some sort of support system, you reach out to them and get the help. Even though they're LA-based, by the way, they do have a nationwide um, presence, so they can help you wherever you are. 
So let me just put that back in context again, the whole piece. So for most people who are in abusive relationships, that is not a one-time thing. Because if you, if you walk in a relationship that turns abusive along the way, and this first time it's happened, then yeah, get the hell out, period. And the reality is likely that that's not something that you've been through that you're going to repeat again because it was not something you had repeated before. However, if this is not the first time you've been in a relationship that got abusive, and I don't necessarily mean physically, but it could be emotional, it could be sexually, it could be verbal, it could be mental abuse, psychic even. If you're being abused by a partner and it's not the first partner that's done it to you, in fact, you look back at your history and see three or four, five, 10, 15 times it's happened, look back further to your childhood and notice what happened when you were a kid. Because for most people who've been in abusive relationships on a repeat, or I should say, most people who experience repetitive or repeated abusive relationships, it started when they were kids, when they saw it or witnessed it in their lives, because the wiring that we get imprinted on when we're kids, we associate love with behavior that we experience as a child. So if you're raised in an environment where your parents are very loving to each other and they're always respectful and they're kind and they never raise their voices and they're always showing their affection for each other, that's the imprint you'll take on as a kid. So when you get to be an adult, that's the sort of relationship you'll attract. And if you had that experience, lucky you, because most people don't. And the thing is, it's on, and it plays on subtle levels. I've talked about this before about my own upbringing, which was wonderful, yet it still gave me an imprint that I, tend to, I, I then experienced going out in the world as an adult dating. So if you're in an environment you were raised, thank you, Kim, Kimberly. It's, it's a big one for a lot of people to get this. So I need to bring this up because of my experience today uh, that, I, that I really got to feel what this is about. So, and, and I'll say this, I'm going to put this in another context. So, yes, as a child, if you're experiencing abuse in your environment, either directly at you or in front of you, either way, because you're in a family dynamic, which is loving, in quotes, can use that term loosely because for some people love doesn't make sense that way. But for most people in abusive environments, that's the way they tie love to, or should say they love despite that because that's the source of love in their family. But it's just... Um, tinted, tainted, or um, overcoat painted with abuse. I'm trying to think of another word. I couldn't find one that would fit. So when you grow up, you will tend to attract relationships where that's part of the picture because that's what you think is familiar, which is, word, which is familiar, and you think is the right way to get love. And I want to be clear, you do not have to keep doing that. However, you will keep doing it until you change the wiring inside because it's the wiring that's running the show and what's worse is not your conscious wiring it's your subconscious wiring because your conscious wiring is updatable every moment but some conscious requires reprogramming and doing a little bit of history result, resolution and, and um, rewriting to change what you're doing in the world so you actually get to a different place and get to a um, more powerful place to live life more fully switching gears slightly so I'll give you this other piece of the puzzle just to be aware of this if you're in an abusive relationship where you're being abused by a partner and it doesn't matter it's, it's mostly men abusing women but there are definitely women abusing men so it's both, it's both ways there are men who are victims too basically the abuser 90% of the time if not more was also raised in an environment that was abusive and maybe it was modeled for them to, it was better to abuse somebody else than be abused so and it's not to be sorry for them, and it's not to make, it's not to put up with them either. Please don't. However, it may give you the insight to realize that anybody who's been abused who hasn't resolved their own patterns will tend to repeat that cycle too, because both partners will be drawn to each other. The abuser and the abusee will be drawn to each other to repeat the paradigm they both were raised with in their own family life. It's not something you can gloss over and go on Tinder and swipe and meet somebody new, because when you do that, you're going to still attract the same sort of relationship independent of what they look like, independent of which application you use or environment you go into, you are actually drawing in a matching pattern because that's the programming inside of you until you change it. I think you're getting my point. I want to make this very clear. You will absolutely um, repeat again and again and again what you experienced as a kid until you change the wiring inside. I think that's clear. One more piece. If you know somebody who's in an abusive environment, sorry, was it Diane? Diane said, it definitely is customary to have come from abuse and then abuse or allow abuse on them and a cycle that it must be, it must be broken. Exactly. Yeah. Thank you, Vicky. Yes. 
this is part of my, I mean, it's not saying my work is specialization in this, but most of my work is centered around helping my clients, and they're all women, to heal those wounds inside. And some of that comes from abusive experiences, whether it was a one-time thing or a repeated thing. But it is a cycle. Yes, it is a cycle that must be broken. And that is the frustration in a way, because I see people who are letting, letting themselves, participating in an abusive environment, in a relationship, who leave that environment. And I go, great, they're having my experience. And then they date somebody else, does the same thing again. I know even though I'm a coach and help people fix this, resolve this, heal this, I can't intervene on somebody else's behalf because they won't they'll they'll think I'm messing up their love life. Let me let me put this example. This is this is an old one I've said a long time ago. I saw it in the news and this has happened several times, but this is a this is I remember this news article to to illustrate this point of just how defensive someone will be to stay in an abusive environment. Yes. Stay in an abusive environment. You think common sense could go no, I'll never do that. I'll walk away for abuse. Well, not everybody will. So this this news article, this is going back probably 15 years ago now, but it wasn't the first time it happened. Or the last time it happened, these are in the news articles all over the place, but a domestic violence case where the police were called to a house where there was a lot of noise coming from out of it. There had been a, call by the, a complaint by the neighbors. They called it in, went to the house, walked out the front door, knock on the door. They, they don't hear anything. They don't hear, get a response. They open the door, walk in. It's in the south, I think, so maybe they don't have as much security on the doors. I don't know. Walk into the house, and they come out a couple of second, couple of minutes later, and these, these are big cops, kind of this big burly guy, the husband, between them. And they're frog-marching him down to the police car, and he's got red in the face, and he's really dying, really um, angry, I mean, fuming, you know, smoke coming out of his ears, and steam coming out of his ears, looking really, you know, pissed off, upset. And they're dragging this police car down the path, you know, from the front, front, of, the house, from the front of the house, front door. The wife comes to the door, and she's got a black eye, she's got a bleeding lip, she's disheveled, the hair's messed up, her clothes are all torn up. And she, got, she comes to the door, and she stands in the doorway, leaning against the post. She's got a kitchen knife in her hand. And she runs down the, the, the pathway behind them, and she raises the knife, and she stabs one of the police officers in the shoulder. And people are like, what? And the news reporters were like shocked when they reported this. And when they have a chance to... I'm going to read your comment when I just finished this story. <laughs> As the comment pop up. When they finally, the paramedics got there and they, they calmed down, gave it some, some um, tranquilizers and got it to settle down. Well, the interviewer afterwards said, what happened? And when she could articulate what she said, she, she felt, the simple statement was, she felt like the police were removing her only source of love. I mean, this man, the hu- her husband, had been beating her up every single night for years, probably. And maybe this is not the first time the cops have been called. But the fact that she would hit a cop to protect her husband who was abusing her is because the wiring from her childhood is that deep inside. The wiring inside is so deep, infused into her heart, that love and violence go together, that love and abuse go together, that to have love without abuse will be weird or not available, not possible. So absolutely challenging. Okay, so I made that point about this thing about we do get a history imprinted as a young age and we'll keep repeating it. So Diana, your next comment was that the only way to change, the only way for change to occur is someone, someone's life. Sorry, the only way to change, the only way for change to occur in someone's life is for them to want it, capsules, yes. doesn't matter how much someone else tells them that there is a problem. Absolutely, absolutely. That's one reason why I'm very clear that the clients who come to work with me have to be clear they're working with me. They can't just say, I'll just sign up for a discovery session and you'll fix me and I'll be fine. It's like, no, we've got to go deep. And for many of them, they walk away. And it's frustrating for me because I want to help them. But until they choose and they want it, as you said, then there's no point in me being there because I won't be able to help them because what I'll help them with will be just on the surface. It won't go deep and they'll keep reverting to the, those deeper patterns. So let me just speak to that for a second. So if this is something you do want to change and you're willing to do the work, key, I do offer a complimentary clarity conversation as my gift to you. That's a complicated word to say, but basically it's a 30-minute complimentary discovery session with me where you can sit down by the phone and talk with me and I can see where you're at, what you're looking for, and show you some steps you can take. And also, if we find we want to work together, I cannot tell you what I do with my clients and what you can do if you want to work with me. If you want that, it's my gift. You can go to my website, which is barryselby.com, my name, and click on Let's Chat, which is on the left-hand side of the uh, navigation bar. 
and sign up right there. There's a little, there's a little um, application form in there with some questions you can answer. And just sign up, schedule on the calendar, and we'll talk. If you're in an abusive environment, I highly, highly recommend you get yourself out. And I know, as we just said, that until you want it, it won't happen. But let me ask you to consider this. Or let me invite you to consider this. When you see clearly that the pain and suffering you're going through to be in love, when will the price be too high? When will the price be more than you're willing to stand? Because at that point, it may be too late. I don't want to make you feel dread, but I want to make sure you get the point. That if you're being abused at this point, or you've been abused in the last relationship, before you go into your next one, maybe a good time to stop. If you're in a relationship that's being abusive now, where you've got black eye or bruising or hurts or wounds, aches, whatever from your partner, I don't mean from sex, I'm talking about violence, then I highly recommend you consider leaving. But you have to make the choice for yourself. When you make that choice, then I'd say, come talk to me. I won't, again, as Diana said, I can't do it for you. The only way for change to happen in your life is for you to be willing to want it and then take the action to get support. And again, I'll put the link to the website underneath for uh, Peace Over Violence because they're the people really who are the, um, the ER for this, they're the emergency room support because they, they get people out of those homes who are in dire straits to get into a shelter, to get into somewhere else to be safe and to get back on their feet. I hope this has been of help to you. Um, this is a heavier topic, and I know it's not something you can really cover in 10, 15 minutes, but I want to just make sure you got the point. And, and for your homework, look back at your own relationship history and see if there's a repeat pattern that's coming up, if there's a repeat cycle that's been happening. And you should see pretty clearly, at least in the last 10 years' worth of relationships, if you had more than one, maybe 20 years if you only had a couple, where there was similar patterns that experienced that happened. Similar pattern of limitation, a pattern of um, diminishment in relationship, and frankly, patterns that stop you from being fully whole and expressing yourself clearly in a relationship. If you find some of those, that's when I suggest you reach out. And if you haven't, or if every relationship you've been in the past has been amazing and wonderful, good on you. <laughs> If that's an Australian term, but I'd say that. Because the thing is, even though I'm speaking about this, this dark point, the patterns that you run go either way. As in, if you're raised in a loving space, as I mentioned earlier, where there was joy and caring, compassion, insight, support, encouragement, all that stuff, you'll do that as an adult automatically, then nothing to change. That's awesome. But for most of us, most people, that isn't always the case. And if you're willing to look and see what's really going on in your history you'll at least see the choice you're making if they're working for you or not. And if they are working, great. If they're not working for you, maybe you're worth making a change. And that's what I'm here for. So I gave you the website. We can go and find out to get in touch with me. Um, also, my, my service you can check out as well. Again, my website, which is barryserver.com. I think that's made my point. This is my daily Facebook Live, and this broadcast is my um, 364th, so tomorrow's one year, of daily broadcasts. Um, if you haven't seen my other broadcasts, they are on my business page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby author. Also on my YouTube channel, where this will end up as well. That's why some of these comments I had to repeat so that people watching YouTube know what I'm responding to. And the channel is Barry Selby and the playlist is Message for the Masculine. And they also end up on my website, which is barryselby.com, on the video blog, which I'm, I'm going to do something about that. It's getting such a big page with 360 plus broadcasts. It's getting a bit slow to load, so you may not even bother going there. But go on Facebook, or go on to YouTube, watch them there. If you have questions, comments about this broadcast, I'll answer them after I sign off. If you know anybody should watch this, please share it with them. And do the homework. Look at your history and see what common threads are there because they'll tell you a lot about your history. Actually, they'll tell you about your life and also tell you about your future unless you make changes. And with that, I wish you a pleasant evening. I do invite you to love yourself regardless of what you decide about this, to take care of yourself to the best of your ability and to raise your standards in love, in life, and everywhere. Thanks for being with me, thanks for watching, and I'll see you again tomorrow, which will be my anniversary, that'll be 365 tomorrow. 
and uh, I'll speak to you then. Take care of yourselves.